Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode I'm continuing my series looking at what would happen if orcs found a bunch of designs for 20th century and 21st century tanks and armored vehicles. On this episode, it's the Kampfpanzer Leopard. So in the first one of these videos I did in the previous episode, I looked at the M577 command post car, but what the orcs did to it, that's hard to forgive, really, especially if you're a Space Marines fan. I'll put a link in the show notes below, so by all means check that out, it's, it's a bit of fun. In this episode, though, I'm looking at the Kampfpanzer Leopard, which is a much more like lots of big tracks and turret and huge cannon. Traditional looking tank, right? Is this cannon enough for the orcs or are they going to have to beef that up a little bit, increase the caliber? Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to get this built as a normal leopard. I'll unbox it, I'll build it, I'll come back, I'll show it off. And then I'll go and get it orked up to the max and bring it back again. Bear with me and I'll be right back. So on the last episode in this series, I looked at the M577 Command Post, which was a US tank. This is a this is a West German Army medium tank. And what we have here is a tank that's much more, I guess, modern looking. You've got sort of a, a gun platform here, sort of a driver thing here, maybe a spotlight or something. Large turret, big, you know, open tracks on either side, and the, the big barreled weapon as well. So very traditional looking, sort of a classic, what you would think of a, as being a tank. And again, I'm faced with the challenge of how to make this thing into something that an orc would be proud to roll across the battlefield of the 41st millennium in. And uh, let's get into it. Let's have a look and see exactly what way we're going to go with this. Huge tracks here to start things. Much wider tracks than the M577. That's interesting. And then I'm into the main sort of body of it. It's got the saddest little face on it. But um, <laughs> that, that aside, I'm sure that was not the intention by Tamiya. Let me see when this one was dated. This is a 1969 sculpt. So even older than the uh, M577 from last week. In my head, I thought this was going to be a more recent one. But nope, 1969. That's so cool. I love how old these kits are. And yet, look at the amount of detail in them. They are just fabulous looking. Whatever way they designed the mold back then in the late 60s and the M577 in the mid 70s, they have retained detail right through to now. I wonder just how much work went into the sculpting of these. I'm sure it was a huge amount because they just look fantastic. No computer aided design back then. It was all just much more of a manual process and here's the top cover of the tank and it is that's quite big that's quite interesting how how large this one is going to be by comparison to the m577 we've got the uh, turret here as well and i guess that's part of the, the turret system and yeah this is going to be a quite quite a big tank then we're not talking bane blade size here but it's going to be big enough one of these rubbery fellas and then we've got the uh, barrel of the, the gun here and all of the accessories and bits and pieces that make this thing so cool. This looks like it's metal, like a zinc mesh or something. Okay, that's going to be interesting to work out where that goes and how to cut that and stuff. And then all of the various um, wheels for the track system. Little decal sheet, and I think the, the decal sheet from last week was like a 1975. And this one is actually a 2003. You just see it down bottom right there. Okay, very cool. Like the number plates in that as well. Japanese there. And then the English language manual as well. With uh, same image from the box. But then some brilliant images from this thing in action. And again with lovely detail giving you a history of the tank and then into these really crisply drawn assembly instructions. Okay, well, I'm going to go get this built up and orked up. Back soon. All right. So here's the Kampfpanzer Leopard. And this was a 
pretty interesting build actually. There's a few uh, nice little elements in this that I hadn't come across before. Uh, one of which is the zinc mesh covering the engine here, so you've still got, so you can still see the engine detail there as well, which is kind of nice. The way this is designed, I was able to um, leave the top completely unstuck, which was lovely. Uh, which means I can still access the panel which holds the zinc mesh. You can see it there. So there's the engine. So just if I wanted to paint that separately, I can do that. I can remove the mesh here if I want to, you know, prime the whole thing. And I don't lose that lovely sort of um, mesh black kind of look to it, which, which would work so well with a painted engine under, underneath. I must check actually what color that is in the real world. Uh, the turret itself, yep, again, I'll just show you underneath here. And you can rotate this, and then that just comes away, which is, again, a really nice part of it, and perfect for kit bashing, um, and perfect for getting into all the nooks and crannies there underneath, I guess, with your primer and paints. So it's kind of cool as a, I guess, a more traditional looking tank, a more modern looking tank with the, the large turret, long barrel, and there are a few elements to it which I really liked. The um, smoke grenade launchers there at the side, these rungs that are all over it, the very detailed hatch cover, so you can actually see how that's put together. I, I see this this little tongue here. That's sort of for a, that's for the half body of the driver, the miniature that comes with it. It's just give you somewhere for them to be glued to if you want to do that. So I kind of left that in place. I'll probably have an orc or a grot or something sticking out of there. The hatches and stuff, you don't have to glue, so you still got a bit of movement on those. And you're going to have this displaying whatever way you want with everything battened down or with people hanging out the top of it. I'm loving these rails at the back. Maybe that's something to do with the radio system. That could be a signal booster. I'm not sure. Um, you got the spotlight at the front here above the barrel, which is a nice touch. And uh, yeah, just a really cool feel to this tank. Uh, a massive amount of detail throughout. I'll show you on the side panels here. Got all the tooling detail. You've got vent covers. There's like wire clippers and axes and things. And a few more tools on the other side as well. You can see more hatch covers and venting there. It looks like a handsaw. Big old rubber tracks on it. Um, see what detail there is on the back here. Yeah, so a lot of tool systems and things. You've got the rear lights and everything on it there. Up front. Similar deal, hooks and lights, and you get wing mirrors there as well. So, what am I going to do to this to orc it up? Well, I think I'm going to swap out this barrel. I'm going to get something a little bit more orc-like there. So, I just want to zoom back out. Just like I did with the M577, here are the accessories I'm going to be working with. And I think really what I want to do is to uh, stick with the core battlefield role of this unit, which is heavy armor heavy caliber, um, all terrain, able to lay down some hate on enemies both near and far. So what I want to do with this to orc it up is I'm going to upgrade this barrel, get a bit more caliber in there, get some more armor plate around the outside of it. I think maybe a reinforced ram up here would be really cool. I think this sort of lives as not a looted vehicle, but I want to have this one as like a kill crusher. Get that front barrel all upgraded, get the armor on there, the reinforced ram at the front. And I think this could be something that is a really serious looking bit of kit. I'll probably put a bit more armor around the side of these tracks as well because they're a bit exposed. And yeah, I'm going to have some fun with this one. So I will be back with the Kampfpanzer Leopard transformed into a Kill Crusher. Back soon. So what happens when the orc mech boys of the 41st millennium get their hands on a design for a Kampfpanzer Leopard? Well, this is what happens. They turn a fairly respectable 20th century battle tank into this dacatastic death dealing monster. It was so much fun to create this thing. It's uh, a good bit longer than it was when it started. Let's get this extra bit here. The original barrel only came to about here, if that, and was a good bit thinner than this. And this thing is just jammed with weaponry. Larger caliber 
main barrel, got an auto gun, another auto gun, got two orcs here who are armed to the teeth, got a missile here and here, we got the double laser cannon at the back, twin linked gun here as well, poking out the back of the thing. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I've missed weapons wise. Oh yeah, <laughs> the most lethal weapon of all, right at the front. Try not to shoot my camera. The most lethal weapon of all is an angry snotling with a broken ball. Check out that micro-sized terror at the front. Isn't he just amazing? So yeah, there's a good bit of extra weaponry on this thing. There's a good bit of extra armor on this thing. I just gotta, I guess, go through it bit by bit here for you. Hopefully all this extra weaponry satisfies the DACA maniacs out there. And I think it's the big gun up front here, the Crusher Cannon. It's what gives the tank its name. This is a, a kill Crusher after all. I wrapped a little bit of barbed wire around the barrel here just to keep it nice and safe. Just in case anyone thought, oh, I want to climb up on that. Yeah, hopefully that'll discourage them. Maybe all of the rest of the armament and the crazy little snotling with the broken bottle at the front. Maybe they'll discourage people as well but you never know. So let's have a look at all of the different components here. Uh, might as well start at the front. I added a reinforced ram around the front of the tank here, just to give it that nice bit of uh, angled armor. Got a little mascot there as well. Hopefully you can see that little, little fella, poor little thing. Some orc iconography there. Got a few barrels. That was actually just to hide a space, but I added one on the other side to give symmetry and it seems to work. Lots of panels and bits and pieces off other kits, of course, here. It wouldn't be an orc vehicle without some cobbled together garbage making up what it calls its sort of armored hide. Got the little snotling at the front there. He came out of a ogre Blood Bowl team, I believe. And as heavily armored as the front of this thing is, the sides are a little bit more medieval. We've got some broken and sharpened uh, wooden planks. They were actually made out of coffee stirs. And hopefully you can see coming out of every wheel hub there, I have bits of spears and swords. And it would be just amazing to see this thing rolling across the battlefield with those spinning around. And ah, uh, imagine, imagine walking beside this tank into battle and you accidentally get too close. Yeah, you do it once. We've got the uh, gunner. The orc there, he's for some reason just screaming rather than using this auto gun. Got some orc bits and pieces there. I think they came off of a kill team. Got that big old missile at the side there. As we go around to the back, you see the twin laser cannons, the twin linked uh, Gatling units there as well. Um, another bit of orc loveliness, just to remind you who this thing belongs to. And as I go around this other side, uh, it pretty much mirrors the other one. We've got the uh, spears and stuff coming out of the wheel hobs. More spiky bits of wood. <laughs> Another missile. The driver up here. Just, I don't know who's driving this tank. Nobody seems to be in control of anything. I think it just seems to be rumbling forward and who's going to stop it. And then the standard there at the back as well. I uh, just want to give you a closer look at this barrel of the Crusher Cannon. You can see that great green stuff world barbed wire wrapped around it. It'd be great to get that all rusty. And just that final bit of orky goodness just there. One thing that I retained here, just talking about the kit bash itself, I was able to retain the elevation on the barrel, but what I lost was the rotation of the turret. I had too much work to do here with armor. I wanted to get the little snotling maniac into the front and I wanted to add the extra weapon at the back and it became too difficult to retain the rotating turret and have all of that stuff. So I figured if I can at least retain the elevating barrel, then I'd be happy. So I did struggle a little bit with the direction I wanted to go getting this from a leopard into the kill crusher that you see in front of you because I knew I needed the crusher cannon. But beyond that, I kind of ran aground. The Kill Bursta, which I'm just going to bring into frame here from last week's episode, link in the show notes below, was so heavily narrative. It had this boss knob who was like collecting marine bits and pieces and sticking them all around. But I was worried that with such a strong narrative in the Kill Bursta that I wasn't going to be able to do that within the Kill Crusher. But as I started to go through my bits box and set aside certain weapons and missiles and spiky things, I realized that 
this is a show piece. The kill burst is here. This is a boss knob showing off. This is his rolling trophy cabinet. Whereas this is an actual battle tank. This thing is just in the thick of it. It is every surface just is dripping lethality. This thing wants to maim or destroy you and everything you stand for. And that was the narrative. That this was an active duty, full on death machine. And that it was staffed by maniac orcs and snotlings who just had nothing in mind but destruction and that's where i sort of found its home so yeah that's what this became it, it became a full-on orc battle tank and that was everything i needed it to be transforming it from the leopard took time i wanted to retain the feel of the original tank where possible but i also wanted it at a glance to feel warhammer 40k and at a glance to feel like it belonged within an orc army and i think it's there and if you are enjoying this content please like share and subscribe it gives me such a buzz to see comments down below as well so absolutely ask me all the questions give me suggestions all the things on the next episode i'm continuing this series of videos where i take 20th and 21st century tanks and armored vehicles and orc them up and it's another German vehicle next week. It's the Hanomag, which is an earlier vehicle than the uh, Leopard here. It's my first half track in this series. And it's a much smaller vehicle than these two. So I'm interested to see what happens there. Tune in next week to see what I do with that. Until then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.